Hey guys, what you're hearing and seeing right here is a continuation on my breadboard synth series using the 4096 Schmidt Trigger NAND gate integrated circuit and the 555 timer providing the beat. One thing that's really important um, to get the different tones is the capacitors and the resistors that you use and the different values for that. Um, in particular, on this 555, it's really cool oscillator chip. You can generate beats, uh, metronome beats, as well as with smaller capacitor values, they generate like musical tones because the oscillations are in s are such close proximity in the frequency that you really don't get the beat kind of metronome effects that you do with your uh, capacitor values on the order of 100 microfarads and up. Check out my previous video on the Schmidt Trigger um, synthesizer, the breadboard synthesizer, and here you can see a schematic of that. All right, moving on to the 555 timer. It's similar to the 4096 in the way that you're interfacing um, some of these pins with resistors and a capacitor on pin 2. So the different values in capacitors and resistors is going to affect your sound. Um, just to review, pin 1 is into ground, pin 2 is a trigger uh, pin. One, one similarity also between the 555 and the 4096 is they both have threshold features. The 4096 threshold is built in um, that's why it's particularly good for audio applications. On the 555, the trigger and the threshold interface with each other as distinct pins. And we'll see how this uh, integrates. On pin 2, we've got our capacitor. And that gets connected to pin 6, which is the threshold pin. Now, pin 6 and pin 7 I have going into that 10K potentiometer. and then. Um, pin 8 voltage in, going to pin 7 via a 1K ohm resistor. So you see we've got this, um, again, kind of that overlay of resistance just like we see on the uh, 4096. Now pin 5 is a control voltage. You can research more about that. I did try connecting this to voltage in and it seemed to really boost the signal quite a bit, but it also screwed up the oscillation and I just did not get the beat that I wanted. So I just left that um, unplugged. And pin four is a reset switch. You can connect this directly to pin eight, which is um, fed into the voltage in, or you can just connect that to the positive rail. And this is all um, integrating together with the 4096. I've got the 4096 lead coming out of the 10K pot that you saw, and I've got that lead going into pin three uh, lead out from the 555. So both outputs from the 555 and the 4096 coming out of the 10K pot um, are going to the eight ohm speaker via the LM386 amp module, which is really cool for boosting the signal and that amp module has got its own 10K pot as well. I'm gonna unplug this capacitor here on the 555, just so you can hear what it sounds like when just the 4096 um, synth is coming through, just the synth tones without that beat. Pretty ugly. You're hearing two different tones um, oscillating just from that module. Now I'll go ahead and plug in the capacitor. Again, again, 100 microfarad capacitor here. Uh, the negative lead going into the negative rail, and the ground rail, and then the positive lead again going into pin two of the 555. Now we got our full synth. I can also trim the value of the 10K pot on the 555 to speed up or slow down that beat. Hear that speeding up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. 
and share this video with your friends and peers who are into breadboarding.